Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life. I am your host, Lori Blau. You guys, you're in for a treat today. I know I say it all the time, but we just keep getting our... Incredible, incredible guest. And I'm really, really psyched to share today's guest with you and talk all fun things about shopping, which is normally something that we don't do a ton of time spending here. So we're always talking about ways to streamline and declutter and be more minimalist, but we're not going there today, people. We're not. We're talking all about holiday shopping and buying sustainably and having fun, doing things, spending our time, money, resources where it really counts. And I have an incredible guest to share with you. A lot of you might know her. My guest today is Jessica Honiger and she is, she's a podcaster. She's a best-selling author. She is an entrepreneur and heads up an incredible entrepreneurial venture called Noonday Collection, which many of you know. And if, for those of you who don't, she's going to talk all about it. Um, she was voted like people to know in like 40 under 40, like all those fancy awards, but she's also a down to earth, real mom of, I believe she has three kids and she's married and lives in Austin and is just really doing all the things that we preach here. She is living authentically. She is serving her community and she is just showing up for her people. And so I said, instead of doing our traditional holiday gift guide this year, I wanted to just pick some company that I could showcase that has a great mission, great products for all kinds of people so that it can help you simplify your shopping and reach out to Jessica and said, Hey, I think you'd be a great fit. And so here we are. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Jessica Honiger to the show. Welcome, Jessica. Thanks for having me. No, I'm so excited. I've actually... I've been, you know, following you, listening to your podcast when it first started, read your book, know about Noonday, all the things. But for the people in the back that don't know you, can you just tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. For all the people in the back, Jessica Honiger, uh, yeah, live in Austin, Texas, eat chips and queso regularly for dinner, have three high schoolers. If you can just imagine that life, three, I have no ego left. Trust me, you raise three teenagers and there, there's no ego. I mean, they, they start making fun of me the moment they walk in the door from school. And I started a company called Noonday Collection around 13 years ago, and it actually started as a fundraiser. Um, we were adopting a child from Rwanda. I had two kids the old-fashioned way, but we wanted to grow our family through adoption. And at the time, I was flipping houses. And you know what you didn't want to be doing during the real estate crash? <laughs> you didn't want to be flipping houses. And so soon, my husband and I were playing chess with our credit cards, but I didn't want to let a financial obstacle get in the way of completing our adoption. And so I knew I needed to start a side hustle. And I had previously lived overseas and had really seen how entrepreneurship was a pathway out of poverty for people. And I started selling artisan made products out of my home that were all handmade, created by vulnerable communities. I started with a community in Uganda, then it grew to Guatemala and then Ethiopia. And then it just absolutely took off. And within just a few years of that first gathering where I invited women to my home to shop these products, we became the third fastest growing company in the nation owned by a woman. So <laughs> you just love never it. know when you are cornered by courage and in financial need. Because let me tell you, that was not a time where I was like, this is a time ripe with possibility. I mean, I thought life is over. I mean, I, I it was those periods where you weren't sleeping. How are we going to pay the bills? And, and yet it led to this, what's ended up becoming this life calling to create connection and catalyze courage and, um, you know, create economic opportunity, especially for marginalized women around the world. And, 
I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I just said a, a scary yes and kept going scared. And I've grown a lot of courage since then. I love it. I love it for so, I mean, for so many reasons, but we've got so many women who listen to the show who are in all different seasons of their life. You know, maybe they're in the throes of it with littles trying to figure out how do I have a sense of identity? Maybe they're going through a, a life change and they're like, I want to get out of corporate America. I, there's so many different scenarios. And mm -hmm. as a entrepreneur myself, and as a mom, I know that there are like, I made up a job. I tell people yeah. all the time, like I made up a job back in the day, like nobody was a professional organizer. And then I was like, I think I want to do this. And I think I can help people. And it sometimes the most incredible things come out of situations that you would have never anticipated. So I love love, love hearing people share their stories like you, because it gives people hope. It gives people absolutely. Like, hey, if she can do it, I could do it or something better could be on the other side. That's right. There is always, I love this song. Um, I've been singing it by Noah Khan, but it's something about, do you like Noah Khan? Oh my God. My, yes. My older daughter is like obsessed with him. She turned, she like turned me on to him and now I'm <laughs> Ooh. So my, all three of my kids turned me on to Noah Khan. So we recently went to ACL, which is a huge music festival in Austin. I went with all three of my teens and it is like, it was so good. But what's that song? And of course I love it because it's like, I'll call your mom. You know, this, the line where it's like, I'll call your mom, but it's like, um, I'm something of, even in the darkness, like the lights, like yes. the darkness won't be forever. You can turn the lights back on. Like the yes. lights are going to turn back on. And and I think, yeah, if you find the lyrics, try to, such, try to, my phone was on do not disturb. So it's, it's, it's a powerful, those, it's yes. a powerful song, but I think, you know, and this really is the story. I think we resist, you know, that, that suffering and pain and hard times and discomfort. Um, it, that's what brings us to growth. Yeah. You, you can't get growth without pain. Pain is actually what's, which brings the growth. Did you find the, no, the lyrics? I'm trying okay. To do it okay. Okay. I feel like my head's in my phone and okay. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I was like, I'm, but I'm going to, I'm going to find it. Um, yeah. But I think it's encouraging. And I think, you know, of course, you're gonna go far. it's it. You're going to go far. That I one. I think so. Well, no. Oh, I'm, no. I'm sure on. I can find it if, if we, if, we right if we're really, if we're oh, really sorry. committed at this point, I feel like, um, oh my gosh, I have, like, I have, there's so many songs and I'm, and I'm bad with songs name. I'm bad with I'm bad with names. It, it's called, okay. I, okay. I found it. You're finding it. Okay. Yes. It says, um, don't let this darkness fool you. All lights turned off can be turned on. Mm. And I think that it's just powerful to think about. Yeah. I, I think that the, even that imagery of that light switch, you know, it's like, if you can turn the light off, you're going to be able to turn it back on again. And I feel, especially over the last few years, you know, all of us have, have faced some sort of level of suffering and have had to pivot and change maybe how we live, maybe our communities, you know, et cetera, but all lights turned off can be turned back on. And certainly noonday literally is about the, the you know, the sun shines the brightest right there in the noonday. And we are about bringing light into the world and light into your home and light into your closet and life into your wardrobe and really empowering women. And I love that you're about organization because actually, I mean, we have a capsule apparel collection. And so we really are trying to simplify life for women around um, apparel. And this year we launched something called drop and shop events. We partner with thread up I'm sure Thread your up. audience knows ThreadUp. I love ThreadUp. I was like one of their, back when they first started. Yeah. I was like one of their first ambassadors when it first, when they first. I love out. it. I love, love it. ThreadUp. Yes. So we have a corporate partnership with ThreadUp. And what you can do if you have, we have a brand ambassador community. So there might be an ambassador in your town. If there's not, join our brand ambassador community. Super simple and fun. And you can host a drop and shop event where all your friends mm clean out their closets, drop the clothes off at a noonday drop and shop. You immediately get a discount to shop new noonday. And then you'll get a gift certificate, you know, a few weeks later after those clothes sell through, through thread up. So it's circular fashion and it's good. It's like triple good, right? Because it's like, you're, we're, then you're buying ethically made product then to replace maybe some of that product that wasn't. And 
I think and your you're not putting yourself it. in a landfill. And that's one of the biggest things that we talk a lot about that here yeah. is there are so many people that are like struggling with guilt. The, well, there's so many reasons, right? What we call them the clutter pitfalls here. And mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. you know, first of all, it's, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I should donate or give it to. So like thread ups are great. And this is a, this is an editorial endorsement. People I'm not getting paid at all by thread up, but <laughs> you can donate your stuff very easily. And then they re- they're resellers, So you can make money, but then they will also recycle your clothes if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that, that's right. You know, it's, it, you're not contributing to to the waste. and waste and it's giving you a clear path and a simple path of getting rid mm-hmm. of your stuff you don't have to be like i'm gonna post it and try to sell it and which just adds more time that oh you it have. that's the thing my son is doing poshmark as a side hustle uh, uh-huh. um because i had a, a bit, it was actually through our partnership with red up and just realizing how much waste goes into landfills was really convicting to me so we wanted to do more so not only is noonday collection doing more and you can host an event super fun especially during the holidays what a great idea and then my son started a, a little Poshmark store where he was selling some of my clothes. And now it's like, those are gone. And now he, but it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And it's a great, like my, <laughs> my niece was doing one of them, Poshmark, uh-huh. Mari, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And, and like, she had the time and the bandwidth right. to do it. And she was making like some, you know, whatever money. And maybe she was just using it to rebuy other things. Right. I know for me, like with all the things, like, I don't, I don't have time for that. Like, <laughs> No, literally like, cause I've been working on P and L statements with him and just really teaching him like how, what is this as a business? And I mean, it ends up being, he makes like $150 a month. Like, especially if you're going to have to start like thrifting clothes to resell and you don't just like have free clothes anymore and you're actually, you know, it's just like, but it's great for him. It's great. That's awesome. But yeah. Hey, that's, it's that's a great, great learning, learning I, curve I for love a it. team. So, so we know kind of about the catalyst. I'm curious the evolution, um, again, mm. just going back to the, you know, the entrepreneurial side of the business, like good, I would say bad, but like as, as anyone go grows, there's growing pains and that, mm-hmm. that adds other layers to your life. Like yeah. I'm wondering through the evolution, like your kids are teenagers. Now you did this 13 years ago. They were little, you were, they were little, you were bringing a, you know, having another child join your family. Yeah. So like your family was going through transition as your business was going through its own growth. Talk yeah. A little bit true. about that. Moms are amazing. I, 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 we almost hire exclusively moms <laughs> because we can manage so many things. I mean, I look back and I'm like, how did I do that with three kids under six and scaling a business? But, you know, after about a year, a year and a half of doing these events out of my house and other women's homes, I had other women that started reaching out to me saying, gosh, I would love to be able to create economic opportunity for women. And a lot of these women were also on the adoption journey. So they were saying, we know that adoption is not a sustainable solution to to the orphan crisis. What we want to do is we want to be a part of family preservation and really keeping families together. And so much of the orphan crisis was caused by an economic crisis. And so it was really powerful to offer them an opportunity to work towards family preservation. A lot of these women would use the extra income they earn from selling, you know, the commission they get for selling Noonday to then fund their international adoptions. And so it really started there. And I, as I began to multiply myself, and I think that was something, you know, first of all, you need to define success for you. You know, because scale is not for everybody. And there's something beautiful about saying, you know what? I want this small lifestyle business that's going to be profitable, that's going to require this many hours of my week. And I want to be able to do it for this many years. And then that is a beautiful thing. And for us, we just started scaling. And so much of that was because there really wasn't this opportunity in the marketplace, both from the perspective of 
there wasn't really an opportunity like Noonday Collection that had really cool, fashionable items that were all handmade by artisans around the globe. They were also being sold kind of via this direct sales, you know, trunk show model and the community um, bringing together women that had this like-mindedness where it was like, oh, fashion, that's fun. And sustainability. Yeah, that's important. And oh my gosh, I want to help people around the world. Um, additionally, within a year, I took, I took my first brand ambassadors, um, on a trip to Guatemala to go and meet the artisans themselves. And so that, that, that really has become a core part of our value proposition and of our community is getting people to travel. And I love getting people outside of their comfort zones. I mean, we have so many ambassadors that they got their first passport because of going on a new day ambassador trip and getting to walk with women again. It's this whole concept. You know, I wrote this book and perfect courage, which is all about, you know, live a life of purpose by leaving comfort and going scared. So I love taking people outside of their comfort zone. I feel like that's where growth has happened for me. And that's where I feel like growth happens for others. And I mean, I want us all to be growing together. So we, we began to scale more women were like, I want to do this. You know, the first person that wrote up the compensation plan, her commission structure was uh, an ambassador in Seattle. She's like, I want to do this. I'm like, great. What, tell me how much you want to make. And like, let's do it. You know, I mean, that's really how it happened scaled organically. And then it was clear, you know, this is a business. This isn't a fundraiser. This has legs. I mean, I've, I've have a proven revenue model and I obviously am enjoying this. I'm loving it. And there's momentum. So I really knew at that point I wanted an operational financial partner and I started asking around and it turned out one of my friend's husbands, he had a real passion around social entrepreneurship and had also been looking um, to want to scale a company, a social impact company. And so we ended up partnering up. So he kind of bought equity in through sweat equity for a couple of years, um, going salary free. And then um, we just, oh my God, it was, it was wild. It was really building the plane as it was flying. And that kind of rapid scale is, is extremely unique and has its own unique challenges. But of course the joy is, it has always meant more jobs in the places where we have a presence. And what I've learned over time, because we didn't obviously, you don't keep that kind of rapid growth uh, per trajectory. And then with COVID, having been an events based business, you know, really did disrupt us. Um, so I've, I've really just reflected so much on, you know, what does social impact mean? And it can mean more jobs, the better. But really at Noonday, what we've done is we have come alongside communities and entire communities have changed because of sustainable work, but not just sustainable work, dignified work. And so many of the communities where we work, it's either anti-human trafficking efforts, or it's just the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. And they become like families. Because if you think about it, it's mainly women sitting around a table making making jewelry, making things and talking, talking, and they become each other's families. And, you know, we started off with this one community in Uganda, and now we work in 13 different countries around the world. And I've been able to go travel to all of them. And, you know, we've been partners with them now for many of the same partners for a decade. So now I've been able to see their children who at the time when we began partnering with them, they didn't know how they were going to go to school or, you know, would they be able to, now they're in university, wow. you know, one just became a doctor. One of our artisans kids became a doctor. The other one's about to finish university. And she came to one of our in-person events called shine in Austin when she was 15. And she, that was pivotal for her because she met all these women. She was like, I want to be strong and courageous like these women. And she ended up, um, because of that, she's completely fluent in English three years later and has so many opportunities before her. So it's been really gratifying and humbling to be a part of something, especially cause I, you know, I just kind of said a scary little, yes, it wasn't like, oh, I have this amazing business idea that's going to change the world. It was like, gosh, I like fashion. I really have always been called to, you know, serve the, the global poor and create opportunity for women. And then there you go. That's what we've and been doing. And I love it because so many people are 
trying to find the right thing. Like I have to have the business, like you said, I have to have the business plan. It, the, the timing has to be right, all the things. And I think some of the best success stories are ones that people just took a leap of faith and maybe it wasn't, it didn't seem like the opportune time, but mm. someone had a greater plan for you than what it seemed. And I just love that. I'm curious, how do you find your artisans? How do you keep coming up with, you know, new partners in all these dis- different countries? Because that's got to be tough because you're not just talking about, I mean, you're talking about the cultural barriers and going in, like you said, to the poorest of the poor and the most impoverished mm, places. Yeah. You know, I, so I had spent a couple of years living overseas with an organization called food for the hungry international and, um, was fluent in Spanish. And so, um, I, and then there were also just, there were markets out there at the time, um, that, you know, it was a fair, like you would find these small fair trade mm-hmm. artisan shows. And so I met a couple of groups through that. And then I met other people by literally just flying to, Guatemala and going to the markets and starting to talk to people. So it, every single group we partner with has its own unique story. Um, what, I mean, our group in Rwanda that makes a lot of our packaging comes in these cute little Dutch wax, African bags. They didn't, weren't even a group when I met them. Um, since we were adopting from Rwanda, one of my friends in Rwanda living there, was like, I know noonday is just starting and you don't even know where it's going. But the main issue that I'm seeing here for women is economic opportunity. And what do you think if we sent a few of these women in my community through sewing school and see if they could actually create something for noonday? And so of course that was so scary. Cause I was like, I don't even know what new day is going to be a year from now. So I don't, I don't want to like make these promises. Right. Well, see, that's, I'm just thinking like, oh my gosh, as, as the business owner, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be responsible for somebody's when you were still yeah. unsure of what your business oh, was yeah. going to look like, you know, but you know, I, so I went, it, it was actually the trip I was there to, to adopt Jack and Met with these women and just said, Hey, I, I'm, I'm doing a scary yes, just like you guys. And, you know, but they had to put up money up front too, for the sewing school. So we put them through sewing school and they put themselves through sewing school. And this is so crazy, but there was another company at the time that was a fast growing apparel brand called Matilda Jane clothing. Yeah. I had a friend that used to sell Matilda Jane. Okay. So I posted a photo of my daughter because I loved Matilda Jane for her. I posted a photo of her on Facebook and like with some clever little quote or whatever. And somehow the founder got wind of it and reached out to me and said, I just want to be a part of whatever you're doing. Like, what do you need? This is precisely when the woman were graduating from sewing school. I don't know how to sew, make patterns. I know nothing, right? And I said, well, we have 12 women that are about to graduate from sewing school and they're wanting to start a cooperative. So they need money for a workshop and then they need a marketplace. So we need to make product. Would you, would you want to design product for them? She's like, oh my gosh, I have several gals that work for me. They've always wanted to go to Africa. I want to fund them too. I want to fund three of my designers to go on a trip to meet with these women, to design with them collaboratively, a collection. And then Jessica, we can co-brand it and launch it together. So she does this and she, and she goes, and by the way, I want to give $4,000 of seed money so that they can rent a space for a few months. So they do this. I didn't even go on the trip because I was hustling. I sent it an ambassador. Like when I was like, Hey, do you want to go? Like, do you want to, so went on the trip. And I do think that is one thing I will say that if you are wanting to scale, I think what's clear in my story is always a willingness to give my power away. And I, I didn't say that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I didn't need to be in control of every single thing. And, you know, it is, especially when you're like having other, if you're having a sales model where you're literally giving your brand out to other people, I knew 
that it wasn't always going to be represented exactly like how I thought. But, you know, this is a great situation where it's like, I, I'm literally reflecting back to you right now. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't go on that try. <laughs> I didn't know I was getting designed. I didn't, you know, uh, I, I kind of think someone else was already in Africa, maybe adopting one of their kids. I was like, well, you want to fly over to Rwanda and meet this group? So they did. And we placed a purchase order of 4,000 pieces. That is a huge That's quantity. Huge. That's, That's a huge. huge quantity. And that was their first order. And they are still now making these little sacks for us. We've had a hard time, you know, and that's the thing about Noonday. It is market driven. I mean, it's not, it's not charity. It's like, if something doesn't sell, it's, you know, we can't partner with this, you know, group. So sure, we made a, quite a few things with them over the years, but ultimately the, the packaging they make is super cute. And then since then they've opened a little store in Rwanda, um, that, you know, people come by and buy their things and, you know, they still make some of those original designs that they had made for Matilda Jane. Um, but I think that, you know, it's, it's fun just to remember even that story. And then also Denise, the, this founder, unfortunately, she actually passed away just within a couple of years of partnering with us from cancer, but I will just always remember her willingness to share her power. And, you know, at the, essentially we were kind of direct competitors. I mean, she also had sellers, you know, in her business model, I had sellers in mine and she, she wanted to share that power and platform me, this scrappy little had not even been in business for a year, you know, and I'll just, I'll, I'm so grateful for that. And, um, I, and that's also helped me to, just to always give attention to, to beginners and, you know, to take beginners seriously and, you know, to give them my time when I'm able to, um, so yeah. I love it. And I, again, I love that story for a multitude of reasons, but I, I help support and promote other uh, women who are starting professional organizing businesses mm. and our motto is just simply community over competition because yes. I think if you can if you have the ability to share your knowledge like you said to come in with open arms and say here let me help you if you're in a position to do that let me tell you let me tell you something that could shorten your road your mm -hmm. runway because at the end of the day, we're all trying to serve the same greater good. Uh -huh. and so if you, uh -huh. and then that becomes contagious. And then you now, because somebody held the door open for you and helped you, you're more inclined to want to do that for somebody totally. else. Totally. So I just, I, I just love the ripple effect of yeah. that kindness and generosity. Again, yeah. that wasn't like, let me make this strategic social media post that I can co-brand with somebody. Right, and, right. You know, the spirit was just like, man, I want to be a part of what you're doing. How can I help? You yeah. know? I love it. I love yeah. it. And the, the whole delegation thing is huge because we talk about that so much when it comes mm -hmm. to like living an organized life is there's so many people that want to control. And this is, if you are, it doesn't matter if you're the stay-at-home mom and you're like, this is my job, so I have to do this. Or mm. I'm a perfectionist and you're like, I have to be the one to do it so it's done right. Or whatever narrative mm -hmm. you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. people go being able to say, I'm going to have, I'm going to trust in you to be able to do. If you're surrounding yourself with people on your team or your coworkers or your family or your friends, like you have to just trust that it's going to get done. And I love that. Cause it's not it's always just more easy. fun. It's not always easy. It's not always easy. And, you know, I've done that over the years, especially as we began to scale and hire and, you know, the even start to hire, you know, I remember when, cause I, I, in the chief creative officer, so I'm, you know, over all of the product and the creative and the branding and all of that. And I remember hiring my first person that after a couple of years, I think she ended up working with us for five years and, you know, she kept getting promoted. And so at some point it was clear that her job needed to be the one to like pick the collection. I mean, I was still working with designers to bring it to fruition. But as far as the person who's like looking at all of the gross margins and, 
kind of the supply chain and what artisans need work and all, it just made more sense that at the end of the day, she had more like time to give to analysis of that. And so giving that up, like, okay, you get to be the decision maker of the final decisions of, you know, what gets to go in the line or not. Um, but then like, what does that do for her and her career? And like, she's gone on now. She actually just started a product company of her own out of her house, you know? Um, and I'm so proud of her. And yeah, and I, I I get gratification out of watching her try to build her product brand because I'm like, gosh, I know that so much of what she knows is because of that opportunity I gave her, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. And it's such a it's such a a healthy way for you to look at it because you could have easily flipped the script and been like, you know, I invested all this time working with this person, training her, teaching her. And then she left and went and did her own thing because I see that. And I say this also because we have so many women entrepreneurs that listen to our show and people are like, you know, become very, they they take things personally and take it so Mm -hmm. territorial, become very territorial. And I just love the the perspective that you're coming with of really like, this is great and watching somebody kind of fly and spread their wings is an awesome thing. Yeah. I have seen that good, you know, girl math, girl math is more equals more, you know, like the more power that you share, the more of yourself that you give away, it multiplies itself. And the scarcity mentality just doesn't really actually pan out. And I've been at the 13 years. So I feel like I can feel you pretty good. Cred. Yeah. I got some well, cred. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. I think it's a perfect place to take a quick break. And we come back. I want to dive into the collection. I mean, I want to dive into all the things and pick your brain on some of your favorite gifts. So sit tight. Okay, Jessica, I have to say I was on when I was prepping for the show, I was on your website on the new day website, like looking at all the different things. And first of all, just aesthetically, it's such a fun website to shop. It's very user-friendly. It's very like inspiring. And I like had so much fun and I am somebody that gets decision fatigue very easily because me too. So, but I, I have to say, I found like it was very easy to navigate. So I'm so glad. Yeah. So I wanted to just share that, but we are in spirit of the holidays where a lot of people are thinking about, you know, either putting together their own wish list of things that they want or gifting for other people. And I always try, as I said, at the top of the episode, every year we actually do a holiday gift guide and we kind of focus in on like a different thing, whether it's like local gifts, sustainable, whatever Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of time. I'm not going to lie. My team and I spent a lot of time Mm -hmm. curating that. And we had some other initiatives and things going on and I knew I couldn't give it justice. So I was like, I want to do a different, like have a different approach, but still give our listeners direction and Uh have them do something because I want people to buy things that make sense and matter. I'm not trying to tell people don't ever buy things. I like opening a present. I like giving presents. I like having all these things, but I like to feel good about my purchases. Uh And uh so- for all those reasons, I was like, new day would be great. So I want to just start by going to you and saying what, like, just talk us through some of your favorite gifting ideas. For okay. People. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. we need and another we, hour. <laughs> I know we have, so, there's so much, but we're going to yeah. obviously we're linking all the things. So yeah. Yes. So I will say, yeah. Speaking of decision fatigue, I mean, yes. oh my gosh, I, I, I get f- decision fatigue. So what we did this year is we curated, we pre-curated little gift collections that are like sometimes 50 and 60% off retail. So we would mi- mix, mix together like, Hey, the, for the gal who loves silver, here's our silver collection. And by the way, here's a huge discount. Wow. We also did, you know, here is a vase and a frame and a little tray for the teacher collection also discounted that. So we, we are a lifestyle brand. So we have everything from coffee, coffee mugs, our candle scent, the bright scent is there's no one I've met who doesn't absolutely love it. So if you're thinking of home goods, I'm obsessed with candles. I I designed these scents because I have a very strong sense of smell and can easily get headaches. And I was like, I want to design a scent that like I love and can, you know, 
So I love our, our bright, um, as well as our gather is a little bit more of that, um, holiday time scent is really, okay. really nice. And then we have, um, our courage collection is a collection of personalized charms and each charm in the collection represents something that you're wanting to manifest in that season or an intention that you have. So things like grit and resilience and brave, um, it's a demi fine collection and is all made by women coming out of human trafficking. So I really love that collection. It's really sweet to give as a forever gift. And it comes in a really beautifully elegant pre-wrapped gift set. We also have a really great holiday collection that does very well as far as ornaments. If you're looking for just those, you know, grab and go. Like, I know there's so many parties we go to this time of year just to show up with like well, a yeah, little hostess like a, something. I was just going to say like how many hostess <clears throat> gifts, you know what I mean? That you need. Yeah. So we have a little creature collection, which is my favorite where we have a little unicorn and a zebra and they're all so cute and so bright little octopus. So Aww. that's super fun. I actually, yeah, I've sent the unicorn to Brene Brown uh, a couple of years ago and she posted about on Instagram, which was so fun. Um, um, and so we kept that in the collection and then we have amazing leather goods, you know, so if you're looking for the men in your life, we also have beautiful bags for men, a passport wallet, a wallet, a passport wallet, um, dot kit, and then, um, some beautiful travel bags that will just absolutely stand the test of time. I have, when we first started creating um, from this one collection, it's goat leather. So it, it naturally tans over time. And I've had my same bag for 10 years. And I mean, now I this is like that. deep, dark caramel say, color. It yeah. Like, it does it get soft. Is it like, oh yeah, it? yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. God. I and then that. we have really fun feminine apparel, a very tight capsule collection. It's meant yeah, to be versatile. That. I want to talk about that because cap please capsule wardrobe. I, can't talk about them enough. So yeah. So we have our magic pants, which literally are magic. Um, we've done sizing one, two, and three. So it's like kind of small, medium, medium, large, large, extra large. And these magic pants magically, they change with your body. So you're never going to have to like, Oh, I'm post-pregnancy. And so I need to go buy a whole new pair of pants. I mean, they will even, I don't, I don't think they take you through nine months pregnancy, but they just, um, but, uh, they really do, uh, change and adapt with your body over time. And then we have some great tops to go with the magic pants. And then our dresses are really versatile. So you can wear them, you know, shoulders on shoulders off. We have one dress that you can wear very very nice for date night, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, party, party in the front. You can do a party in the front, or you can do a party in the back. Um, so it's this great smock dress that you can wear more conservatively for work, and then flip it around <laughs> for your <laughs> date that night. <laughs> That's right. My husband likes the party in the front personally. <laughs> Um, so yeah, all of our clothes are, are super ver versatile and again, all made by artisans in India and sustainably made and, um, really, you know, especially this one dress I love it's, it's truly seasonless. Oh my God. I love this dress so much. I wear What's it. it, I wear it. God, What's it called? See, this is the problem. When you're I, know, the I know. Um, I know. but I'll, I'll look it up while you're talking. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing because we, I, I get like, I, I like to plan. I'm a planner, obviously. Mm -hmm. So like I have my, I have a spreadsheet of like all the people I want to buy for and all the things. And I, as much as I love, and I love supporting local, right? But yeah. I always tell people local doesn't have to be your local. It could be right. just a local community. Like you're supporting somebody right. that is in a different. I, yeah, they're doing a happy dance every time they get a purchase order from New Day. Yeah. Like I know the people, I know their names, I know their families. It's called the Bagru Smocked Maxi Dress. So the Smocked max Maxi Dress and the print is this um kind of inspired block print from India, but real neutral colors. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking notes everywhere because I'm gonna go shopping. And, and then we do have sandals. I know it's an odd time to think about sandal purchase in the uh, winter time, but our sandals are, you pick a base and then you pick a strap and then you can wear them a million different ways. So they're made to, you know, the strap can be manipulated, worn and more as like a flip-flop, or you can tie the strap around your ankle. So it really is like, you know, one shoe, but you get like 20 shoes out of it. And then we also have 
um, this really great convertible button tank that can be worn on the front, can be worn in the back, buttons front, you know, all different ways. So we just want, we want, you know, to create more bang for your buck and um, also reduce waste. So you're not off, you know, shopping all of the time. Absolutely. Um, and then we have some really great, um, gl- our glass items, which are all handmade by, I just, I actually was there this time last year, um, this group of artisans that just hand makes every single piece of glass. And we've got a great, um, bracelet collection and necklace collection. That's at a great price point for stocking stuffers. And you get to kind of curate your own little collection of the colors that you like. I love it. I'm so excited because I love buying gifts. I don't, I'm not a big gift. Gi- like I don't like it on me. Although mm-hmm. I mean, I, I do like to open a gift. I'm not going to lie, but I love shopping for other people. And I love also when I can go to one place and yes. get a multitude of things, Yes, which again, I think is what it simplifies. People- Right. It simplifies because we're all busy. And if you can hit like four or five people or whatever mm-hmm. and go, oh, they are something for this person, something for that person. It just, again, gives you more time back in your day. That's right. That's right. And I love, I, we have some great statement earrings, which I think everyone needs a statement earring for the yes. holiday season. So get, 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 your, get something for yourself when you're over there. Well, we, and I am going to, I, I absolutely am going to, and I want you to tell our list because I know you've got so many different sales that are going on. We're going to link to all the things in our show notes, everybody. So don't worry about it and you'll be able to get all the things, but Jessica, I know you've got a bunch of mm-hmm. stuff happening. So. Yeah. So depending on when you're listening to this, um, giving Tuesday, we're doing a 10% give back to international justice mission, which is an organization that's reducing violence for women around the world. And then we have these curated gift collections that again, are anywhere from 50 to 70% off. And then we are going to be having the 12 days of Christmas. So that'll be a surprise every single day on uh, a new deal for you. How? fun. I love that. Well, we're going to drop this episode. I was telling Jessica, we are quick editing turnaround. Thank you, Kimberly, for turning things around quickly so we can get this out in time. So if you are listening in real time, we would love for you to support Giving Tuesday because again, anytime that we can give a little extra give back by really not doing much on our end, other than just clicking buy now, Mm -hmm. you're really helping to change people's lives. And so let's try to support all of these local artisans. And And if you want to host a drop and shop event too, you can just- I love the drop and shop event. Yeah, maybe we can come back and do something with your audience in the spring for spring cleaning. Cause I know it's hard to kind of last minute pull together a little drop and shop. But if you want to, and you're like, I'm going to clean. I actually do usually do a closet clean out towards the end of Cause before I start getting gifts, we like the kids get out of school we spend a whole day of like, okay, we're cleaning out before you get any, before we put anything more in our house, we're doing yes. a clean out. So yeah, we do yeah. say, but you know what? I'm really, I'm going to host my own probably is not going to happen realistically before Christmas this year, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do a drop and shop. I would love to. I would love to too. Where do totally, you live? I live in Pennsylvania in a little town in Pennsylvania. Awesome. I can, so, I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook um, you up. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to talk about it and mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. And I already know because I've got my people and I love bringing people together. So, so fun. I'm absolutely doing it. Love it. So, um, there you have it people. And if you want to do your own drop and shop, shoot me a DM or an email or whatever, let me know. We'll make sure that you guys get connected so that you can do your own drop and shop. And then That's right. we love it. All right. Tell everybody where can they go to find you, Noonday, all the things. All the things. Noondaycollection.com. And then um, I am most active on Instagram, Jessica Honiger, two Gs and one N. And you can subscribe to my email list over there. I talk a lot about entrepreneurship, going scared, having courage, and then of course, just global connection around the world. And then if you want to become a brand ambassador, you can head on over to our website, host an event, head to our website. Otherwise shop away. Shop away people. We love it. This is one of the rare times that I'm going to be like shop, (laughs) shop, shop, but Hey, 
That's what we're all about. Doing good. I mean, it's better than making a donation. It's like really the kind of social impact we're creating around the world is more than most charities that I know are able to accomplish. So it's like, hey, might as well get something out of it. Get something cute out of it. Absolutely. I love it. I love it so much. All right. We're going to take one last quick break. Come back. Just put you in the hot seat for our wrap up questions. So sit tight. All right, Jessica. So I actually have to say as a, again, uh, editorial sidebar, I read your book when it came out. Great book. Love it. So if you guys are looking for a read for yourself, um, Imperfect Courage, go get That's it. Right. It's, on, it's on Noonday's uh, website. You can get it there. Um, but we always like to ask our guests about what books they're reading, loving, something that's been either really impactful. Mm-hmm. It could be something fun, lighthearted. It could be something like, you know, really big. Mm-hmm something that you can share with us. And then that's how I secretly get all of my reading lists. Oh yeah. That's yeah. great. <laughs> well, we can do a whole nother show, but I just got back from four days at a monastery, a silent retreat in the desert. What? I did it. I did. I went to New Mexico where Georgia O'Keeffe painted its most epic, beautiful topography. And so I just did a lot of reading. So this is a good question to ask me, but my favorite, the book that I kind of kept picking up is, um, Oprah Winfrey and Arthur Brooks build the life that you want. And it's just a very comprehensive book covering everything from how to kind of control your emotions, um, to what makes life really fulfilling. He's a researcher at Harvard. And then of course we all know Oprah. So that combination has just been really powerful. And I've really been enjoying that read. And then I just read, um, a young adult book that was super fun. And that one is called the restorationists. And it's about this group of kids. It goes on this journey all about art. Um, just a really fun, easy read. The Restorationist. I like. Can't wait till the. I bet you, my husband knows out. it. My husband is a big young adult. Reader. Okay, I mean it's great. It's like interesting stories. Don't have to think too hard. You know. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. And then our last two questions that we ask every guest because we're all about honesty, authenticity, and of course a little dose of organization here and there. In this particular season of your life, with three teens at home all the things happening, where do you feel that you are the most organized in your life? And where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? So my morning routine is organized. Love it. Um, And when I think of my organization is more around what am I doing around sort of my routines that keep me healthy in a good mental space. 100%, 100%, so, 100%, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I actually have a journal activity that I've been doing for like, I think it was 61 days now. So that's a big deal. Okay. That is. Yeah. That's yeah. Consistent 61 days Cons- of journaling. Cons- yep. Yep. Every single morning. And it's super simple. It's three things I'm thankful for. Um, What's one truth about me or of God? And then what's one thing in my control today that'll make today a good day? Love it. 61 days. Now where I'm a hot mess is there's also an evening journal routine that goes with that. And I mean, I, I have the, I mean, 61 days I've filled out maybe four of the evening ones. Like I just, so is this like a devotional that you like bought? It's, like yes. It's okay. It's, yes. And it's called, uh, okay. It's called morning light and even tide by Tish Oxender. And oh, yes, I feel like I've heard of this. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's just came out. Um, oh, I feel like has she written other stuff? Yeah. She's written other stuff. She's, she's traveled the world with her family. She wrote a book about that. Okay. She's super cool and interesting. Um, but you know, I'm sent a lot of journals, you know, podcasters were sent a lot of things. So this is one of those things that was sent to me, but I was like, this is an invitation. I am going to take this invitation and I'm going to do this. And yeah, so it's, it's been really powerful, but the evening part, I'm just like, I don't, okay. I'm not going to get into this. Cause then I won't have time to explain myself and recover, but I just don't have, <laughs> I'm like, I don't brush my teeth most nights. Okay. Like I'm a hot mess in like the evening time. It's well, not great. I'm so much better in the morning. And that's why, like, I love having that's yeah. Yeah. I, I, Someday I'm, I'm I will have an evening routine. But for now, it is usually, if we don't have plans, laying on the couch, 
watching a show with my kids and falling asleep and waking up and finding that everyone is left but me and <laughs> just stumble into my room and go to bed. <laughs> um, my kids are grown-ish. I call them grown-ish because I have one that just graduated college and one that's in college. And that is still the story of my life. So it's <laughs> <laughs> great. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Jessica, thank you so much. I love your story and thank you so much for coming and sharing it with all of us. It's so inspiring um, as women and just as entrepreneurs and mothers and all the things. It just, it just warms my heart. And I'm so happy that we were able to showcase Noonday for our thank you. holiday shopping this year. I know I will be shopping. Myself will be posting a bunch of stuff. I'll make sure I'm even like posting the stuff that in like on social media, what we're buying that I won't say for who, not that anybody in my family like follows my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you so much. And if this is your first time tuning into our show, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to you, that you click the subscribe, follow button, wherever you're listening. And one bit of housekeeping that I totally forgot to mention at the top of the episode, Kimberly will get mad at me if I forget to mention it, is that we have a webinar that is going to be coming up. Um, there's a link to it in the show notes. It's on December 1st. So again, depending on when you're listening to this episode, um, it's all about our Enneagram and clutter framework. Like what does your Enneagram type have to do with your relationship with clutter? So um, if you're interested, we would love to have you there. It's only $20. It's just quick, easy, and um, you can come ask Q&A. So we'd love to have you there. So make sure that you check that out too. But until next week, I'm Lori Palau. Thanks so much for being here. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.